folks, uh, so what I'm going to do today is to talk briefly about pastels and uh, the paper that you're going to use for your pastel drawing. Okay, so let's just talk about the pa uh, paper quickly first. Uh, so the paper that you've asked, been asked to get is Canton Mitian's paper and you should get a, a sheet of black paper. Okay, so the reason why we want to get something like a, a black sheet of paper is because that it's a nice dark surface so that the pastels will appear punchy on your paper, like it will stand out. Okay, it will make the pa pastel look more luminous, much more brighter. Okay. Uh, and essentially that I oftentimes would ask the students to use like a dark value paper. So like a dark blue or dark gray or dark brown, you know, as long as it's dark so that there's a, it serves as a nice contrast for the pastels. So for your class, uh, we are going to use black for now. Okay. So with the Cancel Mitens paper, there's two sides to that paper. And we talked about that earlier. You have the toothy side, which is the rough side. And the toothy side has a very specific texture. And then you have the smooth side, which is, you know, it doesn't have that distinct texture. It is entirely up to you which side you want to use because both sides can be used for pastels. All right. So uh, if you feel more comfortable using the smooth side first, then I would say, hey, go for that first. You know, and you can, you should try at some point uh, to use the rough side as well, just so that you understand uh, you know, how that pastel works on the rougher side of that Canton Mitian's paper. So this paper, again, has two sides and you could use both sides easily for the pastel drawing. So bear in mind that when you do a pastel drawing, uh, you need to make sure that your paper has some sort of texture. So I mentioned just now that you could use the smooth side. Canton Mitian's paper is really nice because even though it's the smoother side of the paper, you still it still has enough friction on it that it will hold on to the pastels. So don't use something like, for example, if you want to make a pastel drawing, don't use something like Bristol paper. It's too smooth. So there's not enough tooth in it for it to hold on to the pastel. So all your pastels are just going to fall onto the ground when you draw, okay? So, so don't use anything that has no sort of like, it, it's too smooth. Don't use any surface, drawing surface of that manner. So cancel meetings, even though the smoother side uh, it's a bit smoother than the rough side. It still has enough friction or texture to for it to adhere uh, the pastel. So you're good. All right. Either side would be fine. All right. So what we have here is a bunch of pastel sets that I've brought for you. Okay. So uh, what you want to do is make sure that you purchase the correct type of pastels, meaning that what we are going to use for the assignment is chalk pastels not oil pastels. So there's chalk pastels, there's oil pastels. So chalk pastels uh, is quite different from oil pastels. Oil pastels work very much like crayons, like Crayola. So we're not going to use that, all right? Chalk pastel comes in different type of sets and they're made by different, uh, or oh, they come in different brands, okay? So it really depends on how much money you want to spend on the different sets and the different brands. So. Uh, one of the, what, what, what I would like my students to do is use two sets of pastels, uh, chalk pastels that's hard and chalk pastels that's soft. I like to have the students experiment and use both of the draw, both of the pastels uh, at once when they're making the drawing, okay? So with the hard pastels, we have a brand that's called New Pastels, uh, and it's New Pastel Prisma, it's made by Prisma Color and it's called New Pastels. And I find that this pastel set is really nice uh, and it's, it's a hot pastel and what does that mean? It means that it has uh, quite a bit of binder and um, so that you can draw with this pastel set and you can make sort of like details and fine edges with it. Okay, it works really, really well. And that uh, to me, I feel that students use this as well as artists. So it's a pretty uh, decent uh, brand to use. And it comes in different sets. So you have a set of 12, 24, 36, 48, and you can have up to a set of 96. It just really depends on how much money you want to spend. So when you look at this pastel set here, this one is sort of a rectangular shaped pastel uh, stick. And so some students like to do, or some professionals like to do, is that they want to get a nice fine point, so they sharpen it like they would a pencil. To me, that's like wasting pastel. So one of the ways to get a point 
with this pastel stick is to when you're drawing, you know, every time you pick up that pastel stick and when you draw with it, just remember to rotate it. Okay? So every now and then rotate it and after a while it will make a fine point. Okay? So uh so new pastel is a hot pastel and it, there are other hot pastel brands as well. It just really depends on what type of brand that you want to purchase and again how much money that you want to spend and and why are some pastel sets more expensive than the other uh because uh or you know why are they why do they have differ, differing prices is because that some pastel sets have more pigment uh than other pastel sets so like for example you have Rembrandt and Rembrandt is sits between like a soft and her hard pastels uh, so it's like semi, semi hard, I guess. And uh, this Rembrandt is set, for example, it feels like a half stick. It is a half stick pastel set. Uh, so if I if I hold this up uh, in my hand, it feels like it's pretty weighty. It means it's got quite a bit of pigment here, uh, not as much chalk. And the Rembrandt set is much more expensive than say. Uh, a new pastel set, for example, this is semi semi soft, right? Semi hard, semi soft. It's because it's got more pigment in it. All right. So something uh, like this, a half set, uh, is is good to have uh, if you can't say don't want to spend too much money on a, a full set, meaning like a full stick. And if you uh, use a half stick set, uh, that's fine. Okay. But this is definitely much more expensive than your other sort of student brand or student grade uh, pastels, okay? So you have another soft pastel set, which is called Low Cornell, okay? And I like to, the students to get a Low Cornell set and a, 40, a set of 48 pastels because this is very, very affordable. It's like a student brand pastel set. Uh, and this is, again, much thicker than the new, new pastels and uh, these are considered soft pastels, all right? So when you, for this particular assignment, you should have your hard pastels along with a set of soft pastels, all right? Uh, and this is just another new pastel set, but it's just a smaller uh, set of pastels, okay? Again, it really depends on how much money you want to spend uh, on your pastel sets, but please make sure you get uh, a combination of hard and soft pastels. Please make sure that double check that it's chalk pastels okay it's very very different than oil pastels and we won't be using oil pastels in class okay folks so what we're going to do is uh we're going to do a little bit of mixing today but let me just explain very quickly why you have two sets of uh pastels you know remember i mentioned that you should get like a set of hard pastels and a set of soft pastels and there are many, many brands out there and it really, you should go online and check out the prices and depends on like how much money you want to spend. But make sure you get a decent uh, brand uh, that's affordable. So like hot pastels, new pastels is definitely a good brand to have. The soft pastels, there are many different types. Uh, and get get a, a sort of a, both hot and soft pastels, chalk pastels for this particular uh, drawing. Okay, so just a couple of things uh, to uh, that I should mention to you when you're using your pastels. All right, so with the hard pastels, especially the new pastels, uh, the reason why they're hard is because they have a lot more binder in them, uh, and so it's basically like chalk or sort of a clay uh, material bound with uh, with the pigment, um, and and so then you have that hard pastels. That's how the pastels are made. Okay, so this is one thing I want to you to pay attention to. All right, in the hard pastels, there are certain colors that are really, really hard. So depending on the set that you have, this is a 96 set, but say in a 48 set, uh, you have the reds here, you have some reds here. I don't know which ones are super hard, but technically all these pastels you should be able to use easily. But for whatever reason, with the new pastels, there are some reds that are like really, really hard. So let's try this one. This one seems okay. Um, this one is not, it's okay, but I'm not pressing down. But see, this is, this is fairly hard. I have to press down a little bit more. Okay, so if you have like some reds in your pastel set, and it doesn't seem to want to go on easily, go onto your paper easily, if it's like really, really hard, if you... This one, 
seems fairly soft enough. This one is a bit harder, I can tell. So if I need to press down on it, then maybe reconsider using that particular pastel. Even though you really like the color and it's in your still life and you think that you could use that, just kind of think twice about using it because you don't want to bear down and put a lot of pressure on your uh, pastel to try and get the color onto your paper because what's going to happen is that it's going to sort of ruin the surface of your paper. You want to make sure that your paper still has some sort of friction, you know, some sort of like uh, so to even on the smooth side right now this is the smooth side I can feel with my hands that it's kind of like a little rough of course it's not as toothy as the, the the rough side but the smooth side still has that roughness to it that will adhere to the pastels but if you go in and you bear down on it and you ruin that surface and you smooth it out then you can't layer your pastels and and so that would defeat the purpose all right when you do this particular assignment what we're going to do is we're going to layer pastels we're not going to blend with our fingers or with a chamois or with tissue you know we're not going to do any of that okay is it wrong to blend no it's not wrong to blend but we're going to avoid blending because blending is something that we do very very often and it's a pretty easy thing to do and you could certainly do that on your own time all right but for a class project we're going to layer the pastels, all right? So let me tell you the difference. If you layer the pastels, your colors will be much, much brighter. They'll be like, they look, you know, they, they look more punchy. If you blend with your fingers or with your uh, tissue paper, or now they actually have uh, these kind of spongy brushes or spongy tools, like they're, they're made out of sponge that you could actually use uh, specifically for pastels to help you blend. Okay, so one can purchase that. But again, we're not blending because when you blend your pastels, you get, you turn it into really soft colors. So like the, the color will not be so intense. Uh, they will not pop. They will just be like much more mellow, much so, you know, softer. Okay, so again, nothing wrong with that. And you can certainly do that on your own time. But for the class assignments, we're going to layer. And I would say layer as much as you possibly can. All right. In order to do that, please make sure that you don't apply pressure onto your paper. So when you use your pastels, you all you need to do is pick up a pastels and just kind of put it down on the paper. You do not need to press on it. Because why? Because when you press on it, some of it will adhere onto the surface of the paper, others will just fall off. So you're just wasting pastel. And if you press down and you deposit a lot of pastel at once onto your paper, you're going to only saturate the surface of the paper. And then it'll be harder to, to put more pastels on top of that. So what you want to do is like light pressure, just as if you're skating. I always like to tell the students, it's like you're skating, ice skating, you know, very light pressure. And you just kind of put down the pastels on it. And then you can just kind of layer it. Okay? And you'll notice that there are already little bits, like powdered bits that seems to be like, Kind of falling all right that means they're not all adhering onto the surface of the paper you can always tap to make sure that excess will fall off the paper and then you'll see what you have that's actually left on your drawing okay so again do not press down on your drawing implement which is your pastels okay now i oftentimes will start off with hard pastels first and then i will layer it with soft pastels so is that a rule uh, not exactly. I mean, there are no hard and fast rules when it comes to, to drawing um, with pastels. So some artists, oftentimes artists will use the hard pastels and then they'll put soft pastels on top. But there are artists that I know who've done absolutely stunning, beautiful work and they use soft pastels first and then they fine tune it with the hard pastels because you can get really nice details with the hard pastels. So then they fine tuned it with the hard pastels on top of the soft ones. So it just really depends. But for this, for your assignments, my suggestion to you would be this. Use the hard pastels first, followed by the soft pastels, okay? Uh, I think that will work very nicely. And then especially if you have Rembrandt, Rembrandt is a really nice pastel set, like, like I had said earlier, because it's got lots of pigment in it. It, it, it and the colors are really brilliant because it's very set, you know, the, it's very saturated because it has more pigment than chalk. But this is considered sort of semi-soft pastels. 
Um, and so I would say if you use a lot of Rembrandt at the beginning and then you try to layer it with hard pastels, new, new pastels, hard pastels, it's going to be really difficult because you've already filled up that surface. Uh, it's very hard to use that hard pastels on top of a Rembrandt. So again, I would say to you, if you're using both and you should use both, use the hard pastels first, get, get it drawn, you know, and then enhance it and, and just kind of then layer it with your soft pastels, all right? Remember, some of these hard pastels are super, super hard and oftentimes it affects the red. So just pay attention to that, okay? Do not put pressure on it. Do not force it if it doesn't want to come on to the, to the paper because it's kind of hard like this one right here. Then don't force it. Just don't use it. Pick another color. All right. Okay. So now uh, what I want to do is also to show you how to mix certain colors with your pastels. In fact, not actually colors. I'm going to show you how to mix uh, grays with your pastels. So the question is, you may ask, uh, is this, well, we have grays in here. So why can't we use the gray? Why do we need to mix gray if we have grays in our pastel set? That's a very good question. So um, the reason why you should mix your grays is because you want to use different colors to make gray so that the gray is much more interesting, it's much more deeper, okay? As opposed to like a flatter, uh, it's no color, there's no color here, like a flatter value. Um, because if you use the grays from your pastel set, it's basically uh, black and white mixed together to give you that gray. And it's not the same if you mix a gray from, say, blue and uh, uh, cool brown uh, and white. That gray has, it has more chroma, uh, has more color than just a gray that's straight from your pastel set. Okay, uh, so mix your grays, all right? And the other thing too is that you also want to mix your blacks, okay? So yes, there's a black pastel set, but normally what I tell my students is don't touch the black, don't touch the gray. Those are the, the pastels you cannot use, uh, but you can mix gray easily and you can certainly mix black. It may not look exactly like the black that you get from your pastel set, but it will approximate black. So mix all the dark colors that you have in your pastel set to approximate black, okay? The other thing is that when you're layering pastels onto your paper, after a while, it feels like you're just moving pastel around. Like it doesn't feel like it's sticking on the paper anymore. Uh, it's not like registering anymore. It feels like you're just kind of moving around on the page. That means that your, pa your paper is now saturated. The surface is saturated. So what you need to do is take the pastel uh, drawing outside, spray fix it very lightly, a few coats, few light coats, and then let it dry and then continue to draw on there. Because after you've spray fixed it, a few coats, again, light coats, then the surface will be open to receiving more pastels. So yeah, you can continue to layer it. And if it gets oversaturated again, no big deal, spray fix it again. All right. Uh, some students will spray fix in between. Uh, and I oftentimes encourage that, especially if the paper is saturated, the surface of the paper is saturated, or they may wait till the very end to spray fix it. Okay. You need to spray fix your drawing uh, for practical purposes, especially in this class, uh, because you know, if not, the pastel will go off onto your other drawings, it'll, it'll fall off, you know, so you don't want to do that, okay? Um, but some artists will use like a very rough sheet of paper or a specially prepared surface that uh, they will then just layer the pastels and not spray fix it, okay? And they'll frame that pastel drawing under glass, all right? So, but for, in this case, we want to make sure we spray fix the drawing. 